Hi guys, I'm Sarah Weber and today I will be talking about the loss of heritage language acquisition and language assimilation. The United States of America has always been considered a melting pot of cultures. I felt drawn to this quote because it counteracts the supposed superiority of the English that is present in the United States. There is a negative view of immigrants and a strong advocacy for monolingualism in modern America, even though its history is heavily influenced by immigration. America has no national language, but many argue that this should be updated to English. The dominance of English in this country remains, while other languages that are spoken within the borders simply coexist in its shadow. English is the preferred language of most immigrant nationalities. Within a few generations, the descendants of immigrants often are no longer fluent in their heritage language. Language assimilation causes an increased loss of heritage language in the second and third generations. Immigration numbers in the United States were at their lowest in the early 1960s. In 1965, a slew of legislation altering immigration began. The Immigration Act of 1965 got rid of nationality quotas and focused on having skilled workers immigrate to America rather than focus on their country of origin. During the second half of the decade, immigration into America began to increase and has maintained an upwards trend ever since. In 1990, another reform allowed the number of immigrants to increase from 500,000 a year to 675,000. Legislation has since been put into place to restrict and punish illegal immigration. Since 1960, the number of immigrants in America has skyrocketed from 75 million to 214 million in 2010. Immigration has been 75% of our nation's population growth since 2000, the other 25% being births. Language assimilation is the process of a group of people gradually shifting to using a language other than their heritage language. A heritage language is an ethnic or immigrant minority language which is the weaker of a bilingual speaker's two languages. Language, Im language assimilation of immigrant families in the U.S. usually occurs between the second and third generation, the first generation being the immigrant who comes to the United States knowing little to no English. There are a variety of factors that contribute to language assimilation in America. Not only are there societal factors such as racism, pressure to culturally assimilate, and lack of proper language education in schools, but also personal factors such as age, knowledge of the structure of a first language, and socioeconomic status. Children who participate in bilingual school programs on average score higher on tests than students in language immersion programs. Immigrant children often attend English-speaking schools where they come to America. Uneven development is common for dual language learners. If the child does not continue learning the structure of their heritage language at home, they could lose proficiency in it. On the other hand, they learn English at school and become more comfortable with speaking, reading, and writing in English than they are with their heritage language. This contributes to the loss of interest and increase in assimilation that occurs in second generation children and students. There was a survey done by Portis and Howe that asked 5,266 eighth and ninth graders from the Miami and San Diego areas how proficient their English was. The data showed that almost all of the second generation students they interviewed had a proficient knowledge of English and preferred it over their heritage language. 27% of the students in the survey considered themselves fluent in both their heritage language and English. They asked the students for self-analysis and had them take an English proficiency test as well. Bilingualism varies significantly in the second generation. The number of students who claimed they knew English very well was 64.1%, while the number of those confident in their heritage language was only 16.1%. This reinforces that knowledge of the heritage language often starts to disappear within the second generation. Having first-hand experience with loss of a heritage language within my own family, I surveyed my mother and her sister about their feelings towards not learning Spanish as children. 
I acknowledge that only having two responders who had nearly identical circumstances growing up has a lot of bias, but I found it was important to explore the causes of loss of heritage language acquisition within my own family. My grandfather grew up in Texas near the Mexican border, so Spanish was the first language he acquired. He later learned English in school and continued speaking it throughout his life. Once he moved to Pennsylvania as an adult in 1969, he was one of the only Latinos in his community. The main reason that his children did not learn Spanish was pressure to assimilate into white American culture. He had also never learned to read in Spanish, which likely resulted in a lack of retention of the language. This brought me to the conclusion that maybe my mother and her siblings were the third generation in the process and my grandfather was the second. The questions were formulated to invoke opinions on language assimilation since they grew up with a minority father and a white mother in a predominantly white town. I initially knew the reasons behind their lack of heritage language acquisition were all due to assimilation, but there is more information to be gained by asking for their perspectives. I have their responses listed here. These are both adult women in their 40s to 50s who are monolingual English speakers. They agreed that they wish they had learned Spanish as children. The area in which a person grows up impacts their language acquisition significantly. They grew up in a predominantly white area with only one parent who had the ability to speak Spanish, but mostly spoke English. Language and culture are often correlated and both women felt they would have felt more connected to their culture if they had known Spanish. My aunt, Tina, also seemed to deal with certain assumptions about her ethnicity. Due to her darker complexion, people often assume she spoke Spanish or asked if she was Latina. On the other hand, my mother, Tammy, who has a paler complexion and lighter eyes, has rarely been asked if she is Latina. While the neighborhood and society around them pressured minorities to assimilate and to basic white American culture, both women said they were proud that their father was bilingual, even if he did not teach them his first language. Their childhood came after the civil rights movement of the 1960s, which caused a lot of white native-born Americans to act negatively towards any minorities, even if they were born in America. This was one of the reasons my grandfather did not teach his children Spanish. While their answers sounded somewhat accusatory towards their father, the true culprit was assimilation. Loss of a heritage language in the second generation of immigrant families is a common occurrence in the United States. Heritage language acquisition in native-born Americans can be lost as well. This loss is caused by a variety of social and personal factors, but the main contributor is language assimilation. If a person is surrounded by people who speak their heritage language in their community, they are more likely to speak it. It is when the parents are the only heritage language speakers in their life that the children tend to acquire less of the language. English has always been viewed as superior in America, which has created a pressure for immigrants to assimilate. Assimilation occurs not only with language, but culture as well. Pressure to succumb to cultural assimilation in the United States leads to language assimilation in immigrants. Language assimilation has occurred since the beginning of our country's modern history, and English, English continues to take precedence over the heritage languages of immigrants.